Are you wondering why your powerful new AI model is slow when running inference? Is it the code, the hardware, or is the model just too big? The truth is, because no two models are the same, they don't all have the same performance limitations. Knowing what kind of model you have is the first step to fixing it. In today's video, we're going to step into the landscape of modern AI models, and most importantly, four common bottlenecks you might hit when trying to run them. Compute, memory, memory bandwidth, and networking. The world of AI is bigger than just text in, text out. We're seeing incredible new architectures, each with its own personality and performance profile. So let's start with discussing the four types of models. Large language models, LLMs, diffusion models, visual language models, VLMs, and mixture of experts, MOEs. First, you have your large language models, the ones your mind probably drifts to first. These are models like Gemma, Llama, DeepSeek, and Fee. They're trained on massive text data sets to understand and generate language. Their defining feature, billions, sometimes trillions of parameters. Then you have diffusion models. These are the engines behind text to image generators like Dolly, Imagine, and Stable Diffusion. They work by starting with noise and progressively denoising it step-by-step step to match a prompt and attempt to create an image. We also have visual language models. These are multimodal, meaning they understand more than one thing. They can look at an image and describe it in text, or they can take a picture and a question and give you an answer. Some examples are Gemini by Google and ChatGPT. And finally, a really interesting architecture, mixture of experts. Instead of one giant dense model, MOE models are composed of many smaller expert models. For any given input, the model only runs a few of those experts. You may have heard of a few of these, such as Kimi K2 or Mixtral. So, why do these different models behave so differently on the same hardware? It all comes down to bottlenecks. Let's break them down. First, compute bound. This is the classic bottleneck. You're compute bound when your processor, such as a TPU pod, is running at 100%, crunching numbers as fast as it can. This often happens during the training of dense models or the inference steps of diffusion models, where every calculation is heavy. The fix, a faster chip or more chips. Perhaps this is something to optimize for, as adding more chips tends to be easier than other methods. Second, memory bound. This is different. This isn't about speed. It's about space. Your model's parameters, the activations, and the data batch all have to fit into the accelerator's VRAM. This is the number one problem for giant LLMs. A 175 billion parameter model can take over 350 gigabytes just to load and have precision. If your TPU only has 80 gigabytes, you're not compute bound, you're memory bound. You can't even start. Third, memory bandwidth bound. This one is subtle. Your TPU might be at 50% utilization. Why? Because it's waiting for data. The bottleneck is the pipe between the VRAM and the processing cores. The math itself is easy, but you have to move billions of parameters from memory to the processor for every single step. This is common in LLM inference and MOE models, where you're constantly swapping experts in and out of memory. The last one, network bound. This bottleneck only appears when you scale out to multiple servers. Your model is too big. It's split across multiple machines. The model can't proceed until all the servers have finished their part and communicated the results to each other. This is a huge challenge for the distributed training of LLMs and for the large scale MOE models where the router has to talk to experts on different machines. Okay, so for all the software devs, AI and platform engineers watching, let's get practical. How do these bottlenecks manifest and what can you do about it? Let's start with LLMs. The obvious problem is memory capacity. For platform engineers, this means provisioning machines with multiple high VRAM accelerators. For the AI engineer, the strategy is often quantitization, reducing the model weights from 16-bit floats down to eight or even four-bit integers. This can slash your memory usage in half or more. Possibly when training these giants, you'll hit a network wall. Training requires distributing the model using strategies like tensor or pipeline parallelism. Every step requires massive synchronization across the accelerator network. A slow interconnect means your expensive TPUs are just sitting idle. Now, for diffusion models. Their bottleneck is almost always pure compute. The magic happens in the denoising loop, which can run 50 
or 100 times without needing to use any memory bandwidth since we're not transferring anything here. Each step is a forward pass through a huge unit model packed with computationally expensive convolutions. Your TPU isn't waiting for data. It's running at 100% flops. The fix here is raw power, faster accelerators, or compiling the model with frameworks like TensorRT to optimize the computational graph. Finally, mixture of experts. They trade the compute bottleneck for memory bandwidth and networking bottlenecks. The gating network decides which experts to use, and you have to pull those experts' weights into the cores immediately. If they're on the same chip, you're limited by your high bandwidth memory speed. If they're on different machines, you're now severely network bound, waiting for the router to talk to remote experts. Success with very large MOE models may depend on an ultra fast, low latency interconnect. So you see, knowing your model architecture doesn't just tell you what might go wrong, it gives you a playbook. It helps you to choose the right hardware, the right parallelization strategy, and the right software optimizations to get the most performance out of your system. So to recap, we have a diverse garden of models, LOMs, Diffusion, VLMs, and MOE. And they all get stuck in different ways, hitting the four major bottlenecks, raw compute, memory capacity, memory bandwidth, or inter-server network. Next time your model is slow, don't just blame the TPU. Ask yourself, is it waiting for compute? Is it waiting for data? Or is the memory network bandwidth getting saturated? To learn more, check out the links in the description below. Thank you.